I invite you to breathe with me as we prepare ourselves for worship. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out fear. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out anxiety. Breathe in the love of God and breathe out all those things that might be troubling you today. Breathe in the love of God and keep on breathing until you are breathing out the love of God onto the entire world. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have again brought us together on the Lord's day to praise you for your goodness and to ask your blessing. Give us grace to see your hand in the week that is past and your purpose in the week to come. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as we turn our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Most merciful God, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God be with you. Let us pray. Lord of life and power, 
Through the mighty resurrection of your Son, you have overcome the old order of sin and death, and have made all things new in him. May we, being dead to sin, and alive to you in Jesus Christ, reign with him in glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit is alive, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Our psalm today is Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 14 to 24. Please join in on the refrain if you are following along from home. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord is triumphed. On this day, the Lord has acted, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Our second reading today comes from the book of Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and who does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people 
and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, Why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of Christ Alleluia, Christ is risen. Our waiting has come to an end. We remember and celebrate that moment when joy and hope was restored, when fear, sorrow, and grief were broken open by the resurrection. 
something impossible, unbelievable, foolish? Yes. But as Paul writes to the church in Corinth, the foolishness of God was wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God stronger than human strength. So let us proclaim with the whole host of heaven, with the great cloud of witnesses, with the church around the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Let us celebrate with joy, dear friends, the feast of the resurrection. However, there is something that feels weird this Easter, something unusual. It feels so strange unsettling not to be able to gather with you in person. While I celebrate, while I have alleluias on my lips, I feel sadness, disappointment, and some grief that this Easter does not look like our usual Easters. I miss you. I miss being able to gather, to sing, to pray and to feast on this holiest day of our year together. While I celebrate Christ's victory over the powers of sin and death, I feel the sorrow of people dying, falling ill, losing jobs, living in fear and uncertainty, and I notice how I am living there too. With this jumble of complexities swirling around in my head and my heart, I read our gospel story today, and I am drawn to Mary Magdalene. First of all, Mary Magdalene is the best. I don't think she gets the credit she deserves. Among other things, she is associated with every single gospel's account of discovering the empty tomb. In today's story from the Gospel according to John, she is essentially the main character. We experience this whole set of events from her perspective, and it is an exciting story. I am on the edge of my seat. She comes to the tomb alone and finds a stone rolled away. She runs, runs to bring the news to Simon Peter, and the disciple who Jesus loved. And they come, those two, not believing her. And they see the linen wrappings and the empty tomb. But then they leave. They go home not understanding. And so it was Mary who saw the angels in white. It was Mary who first saw the risen Lord. It was Mary who was the first to bear witness of this good news to others. I have seen the Lord, the first Easter sermon. God bless Mary Magdalene. Thank you for your faithful witness and leadership. But why? Why Mary? Well, she was obviously amazing and important. However, it was also because it was she who remained, inconsolable and alone, weeping outside the tomb. There is something about this part of the story that punches me in the gut every time, that makes my eyes well up with tears. Her friend and teacher just imprisoned, tortured, humiliated, and executed. And now even his body is gone, taken presumably. Her friends come, but are now gone, leaving her alone, not able to properly grieve, not able to say goodbye. I get here. I hear her. I see here. I feel her. Her distress was so great that she was not even able to recognize the risen Christ, the one she had been looking for, standing right next to him, speaking to him. I think that this is a good reminder 
for me, perhaps for all of us, in this unsettling Easter. At the first Easter, there were tears. At the first Easter, Christ came to someone who is grieving and alone. At the first Easter, the friends of Jesus were separated, at home uncertain and afraid. At the first Easter, it was difficult to understand. It was difficult to find, to recognize the risen Christ. So maybe this Easter does not look like our typical Easter, but neither did the first. Though we are in this collective space right now, remember that there have always been people who have celebrated Easter like this, unable to meet. We are privileged to live where we do not fear to gather to celebrate the resurrection. However, there are places in the world where gathering as the body of Christ has and continues to be dangerous, where people are alone and afraid at Easter. Even in our own context, remember that there have always been people who have entered Easter in anguish, on the heels of pain and tragedy. After a diagnosis they had hoped not to receive, at the end of a difficult relationship, after having lost a job, after the death of a loved one, there have always been people coming to Easter like this. Maybe you yourself have. What does it mean to celebrate and sing Alleluia when there are tears in our eyes, when our world feels so dark, when it is difficult to see the risen Lord? Sitting with this, I believe that this has helped me reflect and realize the true power of Easter. I don't think that it is all smiles and flowers, happiness and rainbows and chocolate. There is a depth and a poignancy to our Easter joy, to the hope of the resurrection. The resurrection is an assertion, a declaration in the face of all that hurts and is wrong, in the words of Desmond Tutu, goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness, and life is stronger than death. And victory is ours through Christ who loves us. Easter is a light shining in the darkness. My favorite movies my favorite books are not the ones where everything works out perfectly the whole way through till the end. They are the ones that make me cry. The ones that turn my tears of sorrow into tears of joy. And where it can sometimes be difficult to distinguish one from the other. The joy of Easter is a joy that makes my heart ache. That makes me tear up and laugh at the same time that leaves me dazed and confused, that mixes longing with hope. If you are feeling sad or alone, afraid, worried, or distracted, if you feel that you had a hard time entering into Holy Week or Easter, if you are having trouble finding the risen Christ, know that you are in good company. And like Mary Magdalene, Maybe it is actually here where you will find him, as Jesus comes and calls to us wherever and however we are, each of us by name. For me, as I worry and pace and grieve, as I have struggled to enter into Holy Week and Easter, I hear the voice of Jesus calling me, calling my name and my heart Hurts breaking open with love and gratitude and joy. 
in moments of prayer over Zoom, in unexpected phone calls, in wrestling over the scriptures, I am experiencing the resurrection. In the light springing up green and abundant in my living room turned greenhouse. In stories of support and strangers caring for strangers, I meet and recognize the risen Christ. I will hold fast, cling if I need to, to the foolish, unbelievable, impossible, yet wondrous mystery of the resurrection. I will maintain that goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness, and that life is stronger than death. That victory is ours through Christ who loves us. Join me. Follow in the footsteps of our sister Mary sharing the good news, sharing where you have seen the risen Lord and where the risen Lord has called out to you. Proclaim with me this Easter, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And now let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that by his power wars and famine may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, 
that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, for our own needs and those of others. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for those who have died in the peace of Christ and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Gracious God, you have heard the prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. gathering our prayers and praises into one. Let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.